Let's start with AOC and this profound word salad that uh, she felt the need to share on social media. Many of these disgusting and insinuating attacks on trans and LGBT people are actually projections of what predatory cisgender and often straight men do when left alone in the presence of women or sometimes horribly children. So instead of getting you to challenge the patriarchy, they're trying to get you to challenge the very gender expressiveness that challenges patriarchy. Don't get it twisted because a lot of people attacking drag are projecting. Really, really makes you think, doesn't it, Kosha? Can you um, unpack that for the audience? Because that was a bit of um, just... Word salad. Yes. <laughs> I think it was the meat and potatoes issue of toxic masculinity repackaged as word salad. Yes. That's what she's doing. And I think, you know, uh, we're in this era of social media, some better than others. She's young. She tends to be quite savvy with it. She's Everybody good at it. thinks they're a media company and they're just constantly, they have to nurture and fuel that brand for not just what they're doing now, but, you know, she probably has her eye on future positions when she's moved on from Congress. So she's working that and like making sure she maintains her audience and she, she's got the lighting and the hair and she's putting out uh, content. And this was just the, the topic of the day. I think, and I may be wrong because I don't speak word salad fluently, but I think she was suggesting those who object to say, a drag time story time or drag performers uh, dancing for children that those who object are actually um, trying to take the attention away from the patriarchy patriarchy and the cis men who are predators against women and children I think so that's but I don't understand I can't follow the logic but I think that's the general gist of what AOC said